Hey guys, it's Emily. We have something really exciting happening right now. Inside of this bin, as we speak, I have a hognose snake, an anaconda face hognose snake, laying her eggs. I'm not going to open it up because I already did it once and I'll explain why later, but she is inside here in her lay box. And if we look underneath, there's one egg that's out right now. And she actually did lay another one before this. And I'll take it down here. And here it is. Now this is what we call a slug in the reptile world. Uh, a slug is an infertile egg or an egg that most likely won't hatch. And I can tell it probably won't hatch because at the end here, there's a bit of a point on the egg. And although you might not be able to see it on camera, it is a rather yellowish color, which is another sign of a slug. But if you look really closely, now you may not be able to see it on the camera here, but on the side, there are some red healthy veins. So there is a chance that this egg might still make it. And it is white on the other side, on the other rounded side. So we're going to incubate it just in case. Mama is still inside of here laying more eggs. And since she's used to people holding her every day, she's one of my program snakes, she doesn't mind me looking at her, although I'm not going to do it right now. But we did get a video of her laying that egg inside there, which I'll play right now. Good job, Mama. You're such a good hog nose. I'm going to close this up now, give her some privacy, and we'll see how many eggs she lays. We're taking a peek to see how many she has. We've removed five. The suspense. Two. I see two! Actually... I see. I think I see three! There. Mm. Right over here. Oh yeah! Wow! Eight eggs! Three. Awesome! Any more in her, do you think? Let me take a look. I think she looks pretty empty. She looks like she's moving around a lot. Yeah, she's empty. Yeah, she's done. Okay, so we're going to take these out and add them to some perlite. We'll throw them in with what we've been putting them in so far which is just a little bit of moss. Here are her first five. Eight eggs. Good, Good job, Mama. Yeah. Now this snake goes to many, many programs with us, so she's totally fine with us reaching in and pulling these eggs out. They all look good and healthy. Yeah, they do. Even the one that we thought was sluggy. No, that's the one we thought was sluggy. Well, that one isn't as yellow as it was originally. Yeah, it's so gotten a lot whiter. That might be okay. Well, let's set them up for incubation. First, we're going to make a few divots for the eggs to lay in. So right now, it doesn't really matter which orientation they're facing because they're really new and it takes about 24 hours for the embryo to attach to the side of the egg. So as long as they maintain the same orientation throughout incubation after 24 hours, that's really all you need. There's the one that we think might be a slug, but it really isn't that yellow in color. The camera makes it look yellow, but it's really not that bad. Although it does have that point, so we'll see. But they all look pretty good. 
Now I'll be drawing an X on the uppermost part of the egg so that we can remember which side is up in case they happen to rotate a little bit during incubation. Now we'll cushion them a little bit by pushing up some perlite to their sides just to help make them a little bit more secure and less likely to roll. Then we'll add on our lid and the date is already written down, uh, the day that they were laid, so we can keep track on when they're due to hatch. And finally, we're going to scoop them, want to move these back for me, into their incubation spot. Perfect. It may seem odd that they're not in an actual incubator, but they're down here because this is our green tree python room, which is heated specifically for them. Which means that down here is right, it should be right at 80 degrees. Yep, 80.7, 79.7. Right around 80 or 81, which is perfect for our hognose snake eggs. If we put them like up on the shelf a little higher, it'd be, yeah, 89. It's a little bit toasty for them up there. But the temperature gradient really lowers as you go down. So down here is the perfect temp for hognose eggs. By the way, it's like 11 o'clock at night now, so these green tree pythons in this room are wide awake trying to figure out why we're inside of their room messing around. So they all think we have food right now. They're just waiting for something. Sorry guys, you have to wait a couple more days. I just candled them all, and most of them are showing very nice, healthy red veins on the inside. But a couple of them, this one and this one, do not show any veins. They're just yellow on the inside, which might mean that they are infertile. Surprisingly, the slug one over here, or the one that I thought was a slug, had veins. So that one is good. So we're going to give them a little bit more time and hope that the two here do develop veins. If they don't, um, they might just not be fertile eggs, but we're going to give them a little bit more time to know for sure. Anyway, we're really excited about this clutch of hognose snake eggs. I thought my last clutch was going to be the one and only clutch I'd have this season, but it turns out I'll have one more. And I know several people, including you subscribers, are interested in baby hognoses this year, and I might have some more for you. With these two being the parents, this is dad and this is the uh, proud mom, they're both anaconda phase hognose snakes, which means that 25% of the eggs should hatch out as just normal western hognoses, and 50% of them should hatch out as anaconda phases, and 25% of them should hatch out as supercondas, which is really what I'm hoping for by breeding these two together. You can see why I'm really excited to possibly get some, so I'll keep you posted mid to, or early to mid-November they should start hatching, and I'll let you know as soon as they start. We'll see you next time.